Hello YouTube, been a while hasn't it? I think we're three races behind where we're supposed to be at this point in the season. But anyway, welcome to Hooton Park for round three of the GX UK Senior Championship. This is warm up on the Sunday morning on race day. Before we get started with the racing, I thought there's a couple of things that you should probably be updated on. There's basically two new regulations for this weekend. One of which, number one, is you cannot use rear-facing cameras, hence why I'm showing you rear-facing footage in a warm-up. I will be doing that in the race, but not after we cross the line and start racing, because it is naughty and it is illegal, so we will not be doing that. We don't want to get banned and disqualified for the series. The second reg change, as we come up, and we're going to give Tyler a little push around the double left of the second reg change is no hand signals, no taking your hands off the wheel, which we're going to see a little bit of happening in this video. So we are not supposed to be taking our hands off the wheel in any way, shape or form. If we do that, we are supposed to be being disqualified. Spoiler alert, that, that, that doesn't seem to happen in this race. Anyway, so that's warm up. Car doesn't feel too bad. We've not made a load of changes. We're there or thereabouts, a few tenths off the pace of the fastest guys hoping it's going to be a really good weekend. So, into heat one, we are starting second alongside Russell. We've got Alex Van Jean behind us and Tom and Gier on the inside of us. Never ideal starting on the outside at Hooton because the inside tends to get a big push and a big train going. So as we come around the final corner and we go across the line, I don't quite to expect Russell to go as quick as he does. And Tom and Gier is going to give him a good push through as we go through T1. But we have only lost one place, which isn't the end of the world. And quite frankly, it's a lot better than I was expecting. So on the run down into turn three, just going defensive quickly, just to, to make sure it's, it's not too easy for people to get through. We're hoping that um, Tom and Russell are gonna battle a little bit, because Tom and Jim was really, really rapid um, in the practice session the day before. Uh, so we know he's quick, and if he gets past Russell, he's probably likely to drive off into the distance. So well, those are mate. We don't really want that. We want this to be a bit, a bit as much fun as we possibly can. So coming up to complete the first lap, pretty happy with that. We've managed to hold on to third. These two look like they're going to be squabbling. We're going into T1. They're side by side, and that's going to give us the run on top. A little bit of light contact as we come down, but we're down the inside of Tom into turn two. And now we're into P2, back where we started. So we're going defensive to cut it off because I know other people have gone through as I did. There's Jacob Sharrett just squeezing his way through. And unfortunately, as he does, we lose the space to uh, Tom as well. So we're now down to fourth, but these two are going to battle a little bit and go side by side through the double left. Quite great. I don't think I did that the entire weekend. But um, Tom's lost a little bit of momentum there, so I'm just going to give him a little push as we go through. I'm struggling a little bit, as per usual, with rear grip on the Gillard chassis. Um, everyone else is running OTKs. Uh, there's a couple of Talcos um, in here, but the majority of carts are uh, OTK, and anytime anyone's behind me in the Gillard, they keep telling me how dangerous it looks, and it looks like it's trying to kill me at every corner um, based on the limited rear grip. But yeah, we're, we're kind of losing a bit of pace to the front three. They're definitely quicker than we are. Um, got a little bit of a gap behind us at this point, so not overly defensive, um, no point in defending air basically, um, but also conscious um, that uh, we don't really want to move much further back than fourth, we can help it. And we're just going to try and hold our station, we're going to go a bit more defensive, take a little bit more of a central line here, although the cart's really good in a straight line and, and we didn't really get challenged that much down that back straight, uh, down the main straight uh, day really if I'm honest. So, I'm going to hope that these three are going to fight a little bit uh, and bring them back into us because we haven't got the raw pace to keep up with them. Sure enough, they're having a little scrap, Russell and Tom having a look at each other and what we really need is uh, a bit more of that. Jacob can run off down the road as much as he likes if uh, Tom and Russell want to keep scrapping and force their way back. Coming out there, just lost a little bit of traction coming around the double left which has made us lose some uh, time on the guys in front coming into the final corner. We actually evolved our line through there over the day and started taking a bit of a tighter to line. But we're going defensive now, trying to cut people off. Jumped on a bit, defended for, I think it was six laps. Um, and obviously we've lost pace uh, with the guys in front, especially when we're defending. But now we've got people breathing down their neck. In fact, I think it's Brad who's breathing down their neck. So just trying to cover it off. 
Um, and uh, unfortunately, I didn't know Brad was there. I think Brad thought I turned in on him, unfortunately, but I had no idea he was going through there. He sat behind quite patiently. Let's just have another look. I, I didn't see him at that point. And then remember what we were saying about hands off the wheel? I think Brad gets attacked by a bee inside his helmet at that point. And, um, yeah, he's trying to shake it out of his helmet. I'm genuinely impressed with the flexibility in Brad's neck at this point. Um, his head's going all over the place like a bobble head. He's then um, cleaning through and he's still got that bee in his helmet. I think at this point he's realised that he's taken his hands off the wheel and he's now telling himself off, having a strong word with himself inside his helmet. But um, it's, uh, it's easily done. I'm really focused on it because I've got a terrible habit of, as soon as there's contact or anything, getting my hands off the wheel, wanting to wave and point everything out. So I'm trying really hard this race to keep my hands on the wheel. And I was actually really proud of myself in that moment. I didn't take my hands off the wheel at all. So Brad's pulled out on this around the corner, but he's got a back marker to go around. Um, I think it's Jay Collins. So gained a little bit of traction um, there on Brad, but Brad's quicker than us. And I think that just trying to stay in touch would be a good outcome here, but we've still got a train of carts behind us. So we're trying to drive as defensively as we can to keep them behind us and hold as good a station as we can. See they're taking a slightly tighter line to maximise the exit. Found that worked a lot better at Hooten. And um, yeah, that's it. Across the line. I think I was fifth in that one. So Brad and I hugged it out after. Um, I think he thought I turned in and I didn't see him. So I think we you know, um, no half in. It was really the end of that. And, um, yeah, got on with it. But this is heat two. This is our start from towards the back. We've got Tim in front of us, and we're going to switch over to uh, the right hand side as soon as we possibly can, and just drive down the inside of uh, inside of those carts and try and follow Tom Angier through, who's been super quick, like I said, all day. Um, so we're going to try and stick with him as much as we can. He's got Brad in front of him, so those two are battling uh, really for the win overall today come up here, we've got Brad on the inside, I really want Brad to go a bit quicker because I don't want to get hung out to dry on the outside and have people bombing down the inside of me. Those two have a little bit of contact, Brad switches back in front of me, again, I just want to get tucked in at this point, there's no point in squabbling, I just want to follow Brad and Tom through um, and try and get as far up the grid as I can. So they're now both uh, making a move on Russell uh, as we come down to T1. Russell has to jump out a little bit back off, but he's now going to have a look back at Brad. We're going to give him a push, try and push him through. Unfortunately, we just push him into Brad, kill our momentum, and up the inside comes Tom Stalker, who again was absolutely rapid um, on Saturday practice, uh, and is also a, uh, a good friend. So it's good to see Tom doing well. We're hoping that he's going to get uh, his first heat win, or at least a podium today for the first time. And, Really now what we need to do is keep close to Tom and hopefully find a way uh, back onto the back of this and hope they all scrap and uh, take each other out of it. Overtaking uh, who this weekend was so difficult. The standard of the grid has improved no end. Everyone's got decent engines. There's not much disparity between the cars. Um, making sure you've got your gearing right, it, it really makes everything marginal comes to overtakes. It's hard on the brakes because the braking zones aren't that big in these cars. So you've really got to make sure you judge everything to perfection as uh, that car there just uh, had a little moment off the track so we're just going to follow everyone through. And that, that really shows there, you make a mistake, uh, you've got you know, seven, eight carts barreling past you because the, the train is that tight these days. I felt our pace was okay on, uh, on the straights. It's here really we're going to lose a little bit of speed. Probably not on this lap because they're battling. But turn one and turn two, we're just having to lift out a little bit more than some of the other drivers. Some of Russell squabbling there, having a, a, a great deal. Going to try and push Russell again because uh, Tom looks a bit slow like that. They make contact. Tom comes back in front of me. Bumper's dislodged and. Um, yeah, I think I'm back in front of him, but I think Russell's still down the inside, trying to give him as much room as I can. I get pushed out wide and, and back comes uh, car 33, is it? Back through and, uh, and Tom Stalker. So you can see there, I've gained three places, lost three places in a, literally a matter of corners. So I don't want to lose touch, I want to get back on the bumper of these guys and uh, carry on. But this is going to develop into a 
really great fight between Russell and Tom and basically I've just sat watching uh, in the armchair behind. So we've jumped on a bit here, we've gone past one car and uh, we're trying to catch back up with Russell and Tom. These two, I don't know what they do here, but they have a little bit of coming together on the final corner and uh, they're both down on power, so we're going to catch back up with them. And now we're going to deploy saviour skills on Tom Stalker and push him through. I thought we were going to make it through on Russell as well, but we didn't, so that might not have been the best call. I might have been better off in that instance, giving Russell a push uh, and hopefully hanging it around the outside of Tom. But getting into the final kind of laps of this heat now and hopefully these two are going to uh, start battling uh, severely so that uh, we end up in another situation where we can drive around the outside of them after they're squabbling so just trying to keep it clean just trying to stay within touch that if they have any coming together anyone loses a little bit of drive coming out of one of the corners then we get the opportunity to sneak through at the same time i've got a massive train behind me i think i've got tom butler um, in the novice class behind me pushing me along um, Surprisingly, um, I, I can't remember what the time sprint was, but it was really tight between um, the, the, the whole field in this particular heat. So coming down to T3, Tom's gone defensive. Russell's having a look around the outside. There's some squabbling in front. Russell's done the switch back as Tom has to get out of it. And this is where they start driving absolutely phenomenally. So these two are going to go at it for the remaining laps. So Russell uh, concedes the position there, but he's got good drive out. He's back on, uh, looking again for the cutback there on Tom. So he's stayed wide. Tom's having to uh, pull a tight line. Russell is literally pushing him over the line as we start the final lap. So into T1. You can see that uh, everyone's forced to get out of it a little bit because we're going to gain some ground on these guys. And then as we run down to T3, Tom's taking the defensive line. Russell's going to try the cut back again, looking outside, and he's going to try and drive back down the inside. Nothing happening, though, and here we go. Russell starts going to the outside, switches back onto Tom, onto the inside. Really close, perfectly fair what's going on there. Now they're going to run side by side through the final chicane. Wheels touching, but not too unfair. Russell tries to cut back on Tom, which would have been epic, but he loses drive, and at that point, it opens the door for me to sneak through. So we're going to pinch the spot off Russell, and uh, yeah, all I went to say was epic driving Tom and uh, Russell. Really, really enjoyed watching that. Really clean, really respectful, hard and fair stuff, and that's really what the series is all about. Tom's obviously really happy with that. I know he massively enjoyed that battle with Russell. Russell's kicking himself. Um, because uh, he just broke a little bit of rear traction uh, on that final corner and that cost a position to me. There's me uh, waving uh, and saluting uh, on the formation lap to Andy Hicks and uh, Lee Jones who've been racing in 115 and are both stranded. Now we'll have to wait for us to finish to go up the track. So as we start Heat 3 we're going to give a big push to car 33. Matt Roberts comes kind of out of nowhere there. 33 has a mechanical again. I think his chain snaps. That forced him back and my bumper's all skew if again. Tim, I don't know what has happened to Tim, but Matt's through on him, so we're going to go through on him. And now we're up to fourth. I can't remember where we started. I think we started seventh, maybe ninth, something like that. And um, that's a really great start. We're really happy with that. So if we can just defend for our lives now and hang on to as many places as we can, this should put us in a fairly good spot for a, uh, a good start in the, the final. We're not looking at the front rows or anything like that, but what we want to be is at the front of that mid-pack. All I really care about is beating Alex Van Jean, beating Tom um, Purchase, who's not actually racing this weekend. They're really the drivers that I'm in, in competition with. But as we come down, and we've jumped on a load of laps. Simon Fuller had like, been stuck behind me, and uh, he tried to move into T2. Unfortunately for Simon and I, it, it kind of killed both our momentum and that allows Russell and Alex Van Jean um, to sneak through right near the end of this race. I defended for the entire heat um, really, really well and Simon must have been so frustrated sat behind me but um, I just ran out of road, I didn't have anywhere to go. Simon, I think, also ran out of road because I was occupying that space um, and that really cost us, so yeah. I, I, there wasn't much more to show because I, I can't show a rear camera I can't show my epic defending but anyway this is the final I'm starting 7th we're alongside Jacob Shurrock 
and we've got Russell uh, and Dean in front of us. We've got Brad Philpott and Tom Angier on the front row. I think Matt Roberts behind with Tom Stalker. We're in seventh and one that favoured inside line, so we're going to give Russell a nice big push as we come into T1 and hope that he hangs everyone out. We're actually going to maintain position, which that's fine. I, I'm, I'm cool with that. These guys in front are obviously quicker than us. We've got some quicker drivers um, behind us as well. who are going to try and make their way through. Tom Stalker, I don't know what happened there, but he ran wide coming out, and that's cost him um, momentum coming into double left. So we're going to take that position from him, and that's going to put us up to P6. So we're just going to focus on keeping it clean, trying to keep in touch with this pack in front as they fight. And, um, do our best to defend from everyone behind. So Russell's lost momentum, so we're going to give him a push, try and get him through on Jacob, coming into T1. They go side by side, Jacob gets compromised by Russell, so we're going to keep pushing Russell, pick our side and drive through on Jacob. So Russell's got a really good boost out of that, and um, we're, I think, at this point up to fifth, which is beyond all wildest expectations almost had a nosebleed for being um, this far up and uh, yeah we've got Tom Stalker, Jacob, Alex all behind us and uh, all breathing down our necks so we are defending just as much as we're focusing on trying to stay with Russell. Felt like I've got good pace against Russell on the straight to see the power of the slipstream. Carts engine's really good. Again, losing some time through T1 and T2 because we just have to lift a bit more than the guys in the OTK carts because our rear stability just isn't quite as good. Cart felt good through here though. Felt really solid and really planted. Get good drive out. At this stage, everyone's kind of settling in a little bit. There's a gap in front of Russell. The carts behind are pushing me a bit rather than attacking because if we all start squabbling now, they're just going to get even further down the road. As we come into uh, the final turn, Russell's going to lose a little bit of traction again. And hoping that the slipstream will pull us close enough to have a look. Nothing doing, unfortunately, on this lap. You can see how much of the curve that Russell can take and the car stays stay stable. And we just don't have the same ability in our car for, for whatever reason. But taking a sort of middle line and then moving back out just to try and defend a little bit. But not overly because we don't want to give up too much time to the guys in front. Russell's got much better drive out there. The guys at the front aren't really squabbling at this point. They're just getting on with it and starting to pull a gap. But, you know, I would happily take this all day long. A fifth place finish um, in a field of, I think we had 27 cards. When I'm nowhere near being the quickest driver out there, I would quite happily take that. That'd be a great result for me. Russell gets a bit squirrely through T1, gives a little bit of traction. Not too sure how he gets pressure set, but anyway, we're, we're feeling the pressure, so we go a little bit more defensive, but then open it back up. Caught a little bit on Russell through that corner and the corners in front, so he's coming back in touch. And he can take the first element of the double left quicker than I can, but I can probably take the second one quicker than he can. This is the area where Russell's been struggling a little bit with rear traction, so there's always the chance he's going to oversteer a little bit coming out of that and give us the chance, but he's, he's nailed that this time. Again, that slipstream just puts it a little bit closer. I'm trying to take a bit more curve into T1, close the gap. We're going to have to go defensive here because, again, we've got carts right up behind us. Probably don't defend enough, and Tom Stalker slips by. Right behind him, we've got Jacob slipping through as well. Jacob just there putting his hand up there with a little bit of side pod contact, but there's nothing wrong um, with that. Like he's just following Tom through. I can't get back in. I didn't realise he was that close to Tom. And um, yeah, that sort of breaking momentum, you know, that's killed us a little bit. They've gone off shooting off down the road after Russell. Um, so you can see, definitely, I was the uh, stopper in the bottle in that instance and uh, prevent them. But yeah, as we. Um, jump on a little bit, that was uh, Tom Butler down the inside of us, the big puff of smoke uh, up in front as Tom and Gia actually runs off the track, these guys have started fighting a lot more, uh, and this is where the whole final is about to get turned 
upside down on its head and really open up for me. So as we come down into the double left, they're going three wide. I've zoomed in so you can see it and contact. So Matt Roberts uh, is on the inside and uh, you've got Russell in the middle and, and basically Matt's going to hit Russell. Miss Tom's talking, but poor Tom Angieri has got nowhere to go and he has to plant the car into the barriers at about 40 miles an hour. But luckily, they're all all right. Um, there's quite a bit of car damage, but you can see here three into double left, so who does not go? Tom Stalker is the luckiest man alive, and Tom Angieri is eating some barrier. And it's such a shame for especially Tom Angier because he driven so brilliantly, and to get no points in the final and no result after looking so quick the whole weekend is gutting. So there's a fairly sizable accident on the track now. There's no flags immediately. This has brought me right up onto um, the bumper of Tom Stalker. He's got Jacob in front. Brad's off down the road. I don't, Brad will become aware of this, I think, this time round because he hasn't seen him. Still no flags out on the track. And, and we've suddenly gone from being, I think, in sixth or seventh place to now we're running in fourth and fourth means a trophy and fourth is a place I haven't finished in since the second round at, um, of this series in its inaugural here at Shennington. So now we're going to start uh, getting the flags come out. It's a flag that seems to confuse everyone because people haven't seen it and it's the yellow and black Battenberg flag. It's not out on track yet but I think we might see it as we cross the line now. So we're currently still going around at racing speeds with some yellows in that area. Um, we're just trying to keep in touch with Tom because I've got no idea what's going to happen. We've got carts behind me desperately trying to hold on to this because now I know I've got something to lose, which is uh, a trophy. And there's the Battenberg flag at out. That basically means that uh, we're well, acts like a safety car in karting. So we now have to form up on the leader uh, and drive, um, uh, I think technically it's half pace. So there's a bit of confusion. There's, some of the field don't seem to recognize um, the flag. You've got a pack that forms behind. We all bunch up um, at the front and drive around for a good few laps. It's unclear when we're gonna go green though. And unfortunately, this is, I've jumped on quite a few laps. This is when we're gonna go green. And I didn't really optimize my start coming out there. I've dropped back from Tom quite a bit. But there's only really, I think, two laps to go at this point. So I'm less worried about attacking Tom uh, and keeping pace with these guys at the minute as I, I am in defending so taking a much narrower line really making sure I can't head anyone off I'm praying that I've got Tom Butler uh, behind me who's top of the novices at this point and knows he's getting a trophy um, if he stays in the position he is and hoping that he'll act like a bit of a rear gunner not wanting to attack me and risk his trophy um, but keeping all the guys behind at the same point in time so these guys are now going to start really having a, the, the, the battle for the final lap and for the win in this final. So the three of them are pretty close together. Tom's going to go to the outside. Jacob's having a look around the outside of Brad. They've all compromised their entry and that's brought me right onto the tail of Tom. Give him a nudge, just let him know we're there. I'm not going to attack him. I'm going defensive. If he goes defensive, he doesn't need to. If he doesn't know I'm not going to attack him. Everyone's through T3, so there's really only one place left on this lap which I think is the penultimate lap uh, where there could be an overtaking that's going to be down into the final corner so I've lost a bit of touch with them Jacob goes for a move on Brad just the contact I think Brad just left the door open a bit more than he intended Tom Stalker's busy fannying around with his hands I don't know what he's doing he's telling Brad that he loves him I push him through I'm trying to go down the inside Brad not quite far enough alongside it's not worth risking fourth place finish for me trying to uh, to hang in there and compromise both Brad and I so I don't Tom doesn't seem to defend at this point I don't know why um, but um, Brad goes through I now know there's really only one place that I now have to defend which is the final corner I can feel the carts behind me tapping me and pushing me I think it's George Massey at this point um, who we've not seen much of but you know we normally have a great battle with George so I'm gonna make sure focus on really getting a clean X out of this and now we're going to run down to the line and this is it this is the moment I might actually win a trophy yeah uh, for most of you watching you probably wouldn't be that excited with a fourth place but for me that's as good as a win there's George big respect to George he's managed to get through without anyone murdering him which um, is unusual there's Tom Butler top novice of the day he's over the moon sixth place 
uh, overall finish and top novice of the day. And there's Alex, um, my main championship rival, I would say. Um, he probably thinks he's rivals of uh, some of the faster drivers but that, that's my goal for the series is is, uh, is to, to finish ahead of Alex really so there's Brad he drove a great race he was unlucky um, at the end not to get the win but um, fair play to Jacob you know risking it and, and going for it on that final lap and, and really capitalizing the only place that Brad left the door open so yeah absolutely mega weekend for me most fun I've had um, probably in GX UK wasn't the fastest car out there but I felt like my driving was good it was clean no penalties defended really well held my position and uh, and yeah managed to pick up a trophy for fourth place and to to top it all off I think because it was so unexpected me finishing that high just you know even with the misfortune of uh, the other drivers I was given driver of the day and you can just see there the relief I don't think I've ever felt the pressure driving around the car as much as I did for those two final laps. Just taking it all in. The top three are uh, talking about their race and congratulating Nava. Here comes Tom telling me that he wouldn't have had that third place if I hadn't have pushed him through. Uh, yeah, that's it. So there's me on the left looking smug with my two trophies, looking happier than anyone else on the podium because they're all used to, to winning. But um, what a great weekend and massive thanks to, to, to all the guys at Mago Motorsport, Tom, Tom, Andy, Lee Jones, and of course, Steve. And um, yeah, that's it. And I'll see you in the next one.